I ain't got no buggers or nothing, do you? <laughs> do you hear me? I say I ain't got no buggers or nothing, do you? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Alright, you can ignore that and just speak to me, conversation. So let's start off by telling me your name, where you live, what you do. You My name is Jimmy Longoria, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. And I've been working out here for seven years. What do you do out here? Sell papers as a tourist. And how did you get into this? I prayed about it. <laughs> really, it's a true story and then this guy lived in back of me. His street name's Bob Goodman. I'll we'll keep it at that. You know what I mean? And then uh, he told me he was down here the day the president got shot. He was 13 years old, standing on the street. And uh, he told me all about it. Like I said, he lived right behind me, so he used to talk to me till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, you know what I mean? Tell me all about it, man. A lot of things about this. Kind of stuff he and I've, I've heard a lot of things about this too, you know what I mean? What did he tell you that got you interested? The, he was here the day it happened. It was the first day of school he ever messed. His dad didn't let him see him see the president in Fort Worth because he went to Fort Worth first and he came over here so his mom brought him all the way to Dallas. And so the place he stood at was, was right here on the street right here in between the first and second. I mean, first shot and the fatal head shot were out there where the Stimmons Freeway sign used to be. He stood right there. He seen the president get shot when he was 13. Then even when he grew up, he wrote a book called The Triangle of Fire. He only got like 15,000 copies to put it in up. And then he printed this paper up and then, now I'll sell it. He sold me the rice sitting on it. So you're the person in charge selling this paper now? Yeah. And what's, do you have a company name or? JFK News. Website? Not yet. <laughs> okay. well, I'm, I'm kind of old school. I ain't got a computer yet. I mean, I got one, but it's a laptop and it's getting fixed, you know? I need to get me a home computer. Yeah. What's the name of the paper again? JFK News. Okay. And so, what makes your paper better? How, how many papers are out here? There's like one, two, three. A magazine, two other papers, and mine. What makes my paper different than the other people's? Because my paper is an eyewitness paper, you know what I mean? The other ones ain't. They've just done a lot of research on it and stuff like that. I mean, this guy actually seen the president get shot, you know what I'm saying? When he was 13. So it was like destiny in his life, I guess you could say. It's and didn't. Okay, go ahead. Your whole paper is written by him? Or? Yeah. And then later on, you know, after he met me and stuff, I helped him put it, you know, better shape what people wanted to know and wanted to see and like the angle of this building and how big the trees were. Uh, he's going to give me a medicine. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> Remember I told you he was going to give me a medicine? Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry about that, man. Did you tell me about these? Yeah, my mission. All right, thanks. Try to take them every four hours, you know? But anyway, he got me started on this, you know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, he used to cry to me, you know what I mean, sometimes, because he seen the president get shot, man. He said, man, why did it happen to him? Why does it have to happen to me? Why do I have to see it? You know what I mean? But who are we to ask why? You know what I mean? And so, uh, what, uh, what's your feeling on what happened that day? I don't know. I think it was over like the Vietnam War, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of big companies, Texas. I mean, he's killed. It was killed in here in Texas. And shooting the president back in 1963 was not a federal offense in the state of Texas. I think only in the state of Texas it wasn't, you know what I mean? And, uh, <laughs> you know, I think it was our own government behind it, you know what I mean? Pretty much kind of like the movie JFK, Vietnam War, big, I mean, who supplied all the oil and gas for 11 years in Vietnam? Texas oil, man. That's what I believe, you know, that's what my friend told me. And uh, then, uh, like, Brown Root here in Texas, 
from the LBJ's friends, got a billion dollar contract, a Vietnam War, you know. Bell helicopter here in Texas. Bought a helicopter sent to Vietnam, you know what I mean? Big money, man, big wars, you know what I mean? That's what I think. When there's war, there's money involved, big time. So what's it like um, having to, you know, greet new people every day? And it's just like 99% of the people that come here from all around the world, even our American people here, believe more than one shooter. And maybe 90% of them or 85% believe Oswald wasn't even involved. He was just a patsy. Then you have your 1% that believe Oswald acted alone. But uh, most, what do you believe about I believe right here? maybe three shooters, possibly five, up to six. Three that I know of for sure. But there's two movies they made about this. Movie JFK with Kevin Costner. Most people came out and seen that, but a lot of people don't know about this movie. It's called Executive Action with Burt Lancaster. It came out in 1974. They said the shot came from this building, School Book Depository, 6th floor, the Records Building, which is right across the street, and then the grass, you know. Have you ever seen it? Okay, then you, yeah. Came out in the very first movie about this. But I think in that movie, it was like the Hunts. Remember them? They cornered the silver market. They were like behind it. But uh, like the editor of this paper, he told me he talked to an eyewitness this scene the guy shoot from behind the fence on the grass, you know, where that storm drain is located. But of course, that eyewitness said he would never come forward, you know what I mean? Because you seen what happened to a lot of other eyewitnesses, you know what I mean? Died in the he wasn't 36 months after this happened. But uh, he actually, he said he actually seen the guy shoot from behind the fence. Is that your paper? No. <laughs> Oh, but the storm drain is where the guy shot from, where he said he seen the guy shot from. He said it was like a lookout guy from, for the, you know, a guy, a watchdog, you know what I mean? Guy looking out for the guy to go ahead and shoot. And The storm drain, maybe like the sewer? Yeah, I would say a name, but I don't, I don't know, man. There's people still alive, you know what I mean? But anyway, I think it was like one of LBJ's, just to just say one of his top secret service, man. So you think LBJ was I hope I ain't dead the primary person? Nah, God take care of me. Yeah, I, well, I believe he had he he wasn't the primary person, but I believe him and a lot of other people was involved. You know what I mean? And how do you think they were I mean, lot a lot of people around the world say that too. You know what I'm saying? And I hear that from them, and you know what I mean? Because I put two and two together and. Seems like in the movie LBJ, I mean, the uh, movie JFK says it too, you know what I mean? I learned a lot from that movie as well, as from a friend. But the movie JFK says that they shot like 13 foot back from the corner of the fence. But we believe the storm ring, which is further back, you know what I mean? A straighter shot to us. And then about five years ago, Turner Network, TNT, the cable channel, they came out here and did laser tests. They had the whole street blocked off for two days. And they said uh, Conley got shot from the Dow Tex building, which is now 501 on, on place. They said Kennedy got shot from this one. They said the shot came from the grass snow as well. I didn't see that shot. It was just a documentary. It was like on the History Channel or something like that. I never seen it either, but I was just out here, you know what I mean, when they did it. And they trimmed that corner tree down to get it down to the original size. Um, what other unusual stuff have you seen on the plaza? What kind of things? You seen people bring flowers here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. Every year, man, I mean, you get people down here, you know, every year that you got killed, it, you know, a lot of people, they have especially every fifth year, you know, a lot of people down there and they, people cry, you know what I mean? 39 years later and they still crying, you know what I mean? And, uh, and even McGill Gorbachev came out here one time. I had the privilege of shaking his hand out here. He came out here and see where JFK got killed at. That's a, you know what I mean? Some time to remember now we gave him some free favors. <laughs> but uh, that was pretty cool, you know, like, uh, 
Dennis Quaid came out here, Cubic and Junior, and Carmen, that Christian singer. And uh, a few actors come out here every now and then and check out the site, you know? You been down here when Kevin Costner comes through? Oh, no, I ain't never been out here. I was, that was a little bit before my time. Yeah, but uh, I heard he was down here like the other week. Oh, really? I didn't know that, no. He was in Dallas and just stopped by the plaza. No, I didn't know that. Um, so, did you go over to the Conspiracy Museum? Yeah, I've been up there. What do you think of that? It's a pretty good museum. It's just real small, you know. Goes back all the way to Lincoln, Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King. I mean, need to talk a little bit more about uh, JFK, you know what I mean? Make it a little bit bigger. Kind of like this, and this is a pretty good museum here. So you like this one up here? Yeah, it's, it's got a lot of things to view, you know what I mean? A lot of things to see, more time to spend, get your money's worth. So do you recommend people if they go up here? And yeah, see? yeah. I mean, if you ain't never been, you know, you can say you went, you know. You can gives you a bird's eye view, you know, up there and it's pretty good. It's a pretty good museum, you know. It shows you a lot of you can see the angles from up there, a lot of things to see, a lot of pictures you ain't never seen before, videos and it's worth the money, you know, ten bucks, I mean, a couple of hours, five dollars an hour, that's what I figured, you know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of look at things that way a little bit. But a lot of this things still excites people from back then, you know what I mean? They still come to see. I mean, they've waited 39 years to come see this place, and and they first come out here. And, but when they see it on TV, they when they get here, they say it's much smaller, you know, from the on TV. And uh, they really like, you know, really, a, it's a big wonder in their life now. Like some place they had to come see if they were alive then, you know what I mean? Most people think that way. And so does the place do anything for you anymore since you see it every day? And does it make you feel anything? No, I mean, I've got an open mind, you know what I mean? If anything comes up new, I'll just put it in perspective, you know? Maybe there's different angles, you know what I mean? Different shooters, and I don't think he was going to get out here alive, you know what I mean? I just believe that he was going to be dead since he left this place. That's why they changed that route and slowed down that motorcade, especially in the convertible. What was the route supposed to be originally? I believe down Main Street, convertible was not supposed to go below 20 miles an hour. So when they changed that route, made a right from Main to Houston, Houston to Elm left, somewhere between 11 and 5 miles an hour. Slower car, better shots. So where was the route going to go went down Main? Straight down Main. And to where? And then probably just take a ride on the industrial and get on the freeway that way where there's no really buildings around there. You know what I mean? Where if they turned a the corner, there was no shots that could be made from nowhere, from any buildings up high, like there is right here. But, uh, yeah, there's a... So how do you think they were able to keep the conspiracy a secret? <laughs> Why? How? How? <laughs> a lot of people were scared to talk. A lot of people died mysteriously dead. Mysterious, you know what I mean? A lot of people that were here that day and seen the president get shot and end up dying. A lot of people were afraid to talk. Just like that guy I told you about my friend I talked to, the I wouldn't see behind the fence. He didn't want to talk because a lot of people were dying. They killed Jack Ruby. I mean, they kept him here in Dallas County Jail for three years. He got the death sentence, but he never left Dallas. Here in Texas, you get sentenced five weeks later. If you get sentenced, they send you to Huntsville, you know what I mean? Or ship you around down there and take you to the main unit and ship you around. But they never let him leave Dallas. You know what I mean? They, that way he wasn't taught. And, uh... So, uh... Tell me about working out here. I mean, is it difficult since you're working for yourself? Is it difficult to come out here every day and keep moving? No. no, no, it's not difficult. It's pretty good, you know. It's I love people here, man. It's good to see different faces every day and talk to people and see people's perspective and how they think about this and this and that. Not just one person's point of view, but 
the whole world's point of view, you know? And pretty much the whole world thinks more than one shooter, you know? Possibly two, some think three, some think more than that. Is there any uh, ideas you hear out here that you think are just crazy? <laughs> yeah, like Oswald acted alone. That's crazy to me, man. I mean, there's no way. What makes you say no way? And that magic bullet theory, you know? There's just no way that could happen. <clears throat> bullet turning midair about this. There's just no way it could happen. I mean, even a kid would know that, you know what I mean? But they sold it to the American public. And some people will believe it. <laughs> That's pretty hard to believe. What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty hard to believe. You believe that? You can't bias this by telling me what I think. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> well, cool. I'm just telling you what I think, all right? We're just getting my point of view here, right? Yep. So, uh, so, I mean, you think you're going to be able to make a living off this? Or? I don't know. I don't know what's next. I want, I've been praying for another job somewhere sitting down in a desk, but we'll see what happens. Maybe a preacher someday, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Maybe just get me prepared for something. But another thing, uh, I heard that they found that guy, Charles Harrison, you know, Woody Harrison's dad. They found him in the back, one of them three hobos they found back there. He was one of them. But he's locked up in a federal penitentiary for killing a judge in San Antonio named John Wood. Oh, another thing I think it's real pretty important to me. A lot of people don't know about. But you know that guy that shot from that tower in Austin, Texas, from that college tower in 1966? Yeah. He killed his wife and his mom, I believe, before that. And then he went to go shoot them people. He was shooting people four blocks away. He shot this one guy in a pickup truck four blocks away. That's a pretty accurate shot and killed him. But they, they, it was a picture of a guy, of his same resemblance, you know what I mean? Of him being down here that day the president got killed. You know what I mean? That's three years later. Maybe he went wacko thinking about this and killed his mom and dad, killed his mom and his wife and, you know what I mean? Something, he regret it and then he started killing everybody. They had a, there was a guy that resembled just like him man, down here the day the president got killed. That's a dang good shot four blocks away, you know what I mean? Killing the guy in a pickup truck from that tower. Seen in photographs or just by witnesses? Uh, I think I seen one photograph of him. Kind of a guy that kind of resembled him down here. My friend, me, and we went through a bunch of pictures and he showed me that. But a lot of people, he, he told me about it too. He said he kind of thinks that that guy was down here that day, you know what I mean? So, you know, and there was a guy that uh, my uncle, he's from Mexico. He used to work for a Mexican Inn in Fort Worth. Is it Mexican? Yeah, Mexican Inn. And that lady, she got killed, the owner, the owner of the Mexican Inn. But her boyfriend was a hunter. And he had dealings with Dallas and, you know, all, all of a sudden, he came, after JFK got killed, he came up with a big amount of money all of a sudden. That's what my uncle told me, you know what I mean? And my uncle didn't even know my friend, you know what I mean? The one that wrote that paper, the book. And that lady ended up dying afterwards, you know what I mean? Like an overdose or something. I don't know like she ever done drugs, man. She was a business lady. But anyway, that guy, he was a hunter and he was a good target. And he see he came out with, a big amount of money after JFK got killed. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, that's that's without my uncle even knowing my friend. I heard this. You know what I mean? It's like I think Fort Worth and Dallas pretty much involved. A lot of people in Dallas. I mean, Fort Worth. You know, hooking up with Dallas and guys from about Fort Worth and big big businessmen. Oh. 
patterns a few people. So I mean, you you're on the hip, right? Yeah, but uh, you know, we wholesale a ton. You know what I mean? Real cheap, and they sell it. So I mean, do you do well? Do all right, you know. Make ends meet. No, no, I ain't getting rich out here or nothing like that. Just making ends meet, man. So what kind of other jobs? <clears throat> I mean, do I do? Yeah. Have you been doing jobs over the last Oh, years? yeah, yeah, I do. I'm an all-around jack. I mean, jack of all trades, you know what I mean? I can do anything, pretty much, you know, like to a house or something like that. Well, is there uh, anything I've neglected to ask you? What do you think of the other papers out here? It's pretty good. There's some other papers that show a lot of good information in there. They believe in conspiracy, conspiracy too. But there was this one guy that worked out here a while back. He's been gone about two, three years now. But his brother, his I forget his name. Uh, his brother was the chief of police, I believe back then when JFK got killed. And he had a magazine out here that said Oswald acted alone, you know what I mean? And he, you know, he's an old, older guy, you know, so his brother, uh, I think was the chief of police, if I'm correct, but, or if he didn't, he was pretty high up in the police department back then. And he believed Oswald acted alone, you know what I mean? A lot of people like that, from, that were here from Dallas, police department believe that. And, or they just wanted to say they believed it. So he went along with it. What'd you think of him? I thought he was a nut. <laughs> just an old nut and just trying to make a living off Oswald acting alone, you know what I mean? I mean, we're, we're trying to, all trying to make a living, you know what I mean? But I don't know, you believe Oswald acting alone, I think you're a nut. Uh, what about the other people who have like this way and stuff like that? Oh, you meant Mark Oaks, yeah. yeah. What do you think of that? Uh -huh. Just, they're just like the JFK business. But, I mean, I don't know, something like this you get involved in. Once you start getting involved in it, man, and start getting people's point of view and start thinking about it, <clears throat> how the government really works and, you know what I mean? The lies they put into the American people, and I'm not saying we got a bad government. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying certain individuals in the government could be bad. You know what I'm saying? Like when they killed Caesar, it took like 12 senators to kill Caesar. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know what I mean? You got one bad apple can make a few more bad apples in the bucket. But we do have a good government. I mean, good. America's good, land of the free. Are you political at all? Mm, yeah, I'm a Democrat, I guess you could say, like JFK was. For the poor people. <laughs> you vote? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't vote. I need to, but sometimes I figure, well, what, what, what's my vote going to count? But I should, I guess it could help. But, uh, I don't know, man. I, after that last election, a lot of people thought, man, kind of went weird, you know what I mean? The only trouble they had state, the only trouble they had uh, counts with was Florida, which was the President Bush's brother was governor of. You know what I mean? It's kind of weird. And Gore was ahead, and I don't know. Things. A lot of people thought that, you know what I mean? That, that it was Rob or something, I don't know. But he seems like he's a God-fearing man, you know what I mean? Talks about God a lot in scriptures and stuff like that, so that's pretty good, I think. You think George W? Yeah. Is he a big Yeah, he prays and stuff like that. So that's pretty good, you know? So what do you think about where things are at in America today? Everything happens for a reason. 
The reason, reason why we went up to uh, Iraq, you know what I mean? Why we fought that war, it's pretty much free now. I guess they can get uh, evangelists in there now and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Get the Muslims to start believing in Christ. And maybe that's the reason why the war happened. God allowed it to happen, I don't know. It's a possibility. I've heard that on 700 Club and stuff like that, you know, on TV. Yeah. It's pretty good. Just like the Iron Current came down and Germany wall broke and started getting Christ in there and stuff like that. It's pretty good. So I take it you're very religious, though. Not religious, no. I just believe in Jesus. It's the only way. Why is that? It's just, it's just a feeling. You just know, you know, you know what you know, you know. True fact. It's what I believe, anyway. My personal opinion. And I just heard this morning, forty-six of the forty-six percent of the American people are pretty much saved. You know what I mean? Forty-six percent of the people are like accepted Jesus in their life. You know. Which is pretty good, that's almost half. <laughs> so you think, what happens with other people? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe in limbo. <laughs> nah, but I think it was, uh, JFK was a great president. He was for the people. He was for equal rights and a lot of people wanted them dead at that time. You had the civil rights movement. You had Russia. You had Cuba. After them, you had the mafia after them. A lot of people was after them. Good time to kill the president. Things could go either way, you know what I mean? I mean, he said, why are we going to invade uh, Vietnam 1,000 miles away when we can't invade Cuba 90 miles away? But I mean, he's the one that put the troops over there in the first place, but he was going to bring them back. And a lot of big business, man. Seen a big opportunity to make money, you know? Big, I mean, billions of dollars, you know? And that's what happened. So you think things would have been very different if he had a lift? Probably. In what way? Our people. American people pretty much believe the American government what they said these days, you know. Now they don't believe it too much ever since that happened. Out of lies to the American, American people, you know, by our government. So they just kind of don't believe everything they say no more, you know what I mean? Anything else you want to share? Nah, God bless you. <laughs> Yeah. Alright. Thank you for your time. Alright, man. Hope that helped you out, man. Yep. Hope everything goes good in your documentary and everything else. I hope so too. Okay, got I'm sure I'll be seeing you around some more. I'm taking pictures right. around here. Alright. Alright, see you later. Okay, man. Y'all have a good evening.